This is an earth scraper. It's basically a skyscraper, but instead of towering high into the clouds, it sinks deep under the earth. It's a radical idea for architecture that could completely change the way we build cities. But is this actually a plausible way to live? Can we protect ourselves better from natural disasters? Can we make sure these tunneling towers are full of fresh air and sunlight? And do we even have the technology to build these beneath the earth behemoths? Let's explore the concept of earth scrapers to find out if we could really live in an underground city. What is an earth scraper? Designs for inverted skyscrapers have been around since the 1930s, when Japanese engineers designed the aptly named depth scraper. The design is composed of a cylindrical anti-tower, meaning it's a massive hole in the ground with space to live located all around it. Its creation was in response to a massive earthquake in 1923 that destroyed parts of Tokyo and Yokohama and took thousands of lives. The engineers thought that the depth scraper could protect its residents from extreme seismic tremors. Their theory was that if the building's components were underground, the structures would vibrate together, keeping the building from experiencing crushing strain and significant damage. The design depicts a 35-story subterranean structure with a single story above the earth where people could enter the building and hop on an elevator to take them down to their floor. Fresh air would be pumped into the building and circulated via ventilators located in each suite. As for daylight, this huge mirror angled into the 75-foot wide shaft would distribute the sun's light through the building's windows. They'd employ prismatic glass to distribute the light evenly throughout the units. Earth scrapers, also called reverse skyscrapers, differ from the underground structures we're used to, like bunkers and tunnels. First, they have to be tower-like in construction, with the vast majority of their floors underground. They've also primarily been designed as places where people will live or work, but not as a last-ditch survival effort like bunkers. Instead, their purpose is to delay planetary destruction by creating a more efficient and environmentally friendly kind of building. But what exactly would we need to build such a complex subterranean structure? What problems do they solve? This is exactly why the idea of an underground skyscraper has been on the mind of architects and engineers. It's not just because the idea is cool. These buildings could solve a variety of problems and perhaps preserve our planet. Metropolitan populations are getting bigger and bigger. We reached a population of 8 billion. As we mass migrate to large cities, they become incredibly dense, posing a challenge for city planners. Urban sprawl is becoming a huge issue. It's claiming farmland at a rate of 1.2 million acres per year. In addition to decimating natural habitats as our population grows, the sprawl has been correlated with increased pollution, energy use, traffic congestion, and a decline in community cohesiveness. The Earth's population is predicted to reach 10 billion by the early 2050s. Where are we supposed to put all of those people? Of course, there's also the issue that inspired the creation of the depth scrapers, earthquakes, and natural disasters. Wildfires are another issue that can wipe out entire communities. According to the 2020 Ecological Threat Register, the number of natural disasters has increased tenfold since the 1960s. This means we need to come up with safer ways of building homes for large numbers of people, and we need to do it quickly. The increase in natural disasters is believed to at least partially be due to climate change. And that's another reason earth scrapers could be planet savers. Imagine if we let nature have the surface of the earth back. That's the idea behind the half-earth concept, thought up by biologist E. O. Wilson. He theorizes that if we protect half the global surface, the fraction of species protected will be 85% or more. If we give the planet the space and time to heal itself, then we might just be able to pull ourselves back from the brink of total disaster. It's also possible that earth scrapers will end up being cheaper and more efficient than traditional skyscrapers. They require less surface area and are theorized to have lower operating costs than equivalent above ground structures. The temperatures below ground will be more consistent with some studies showing a range of between 20 and 38 degrees Celsius between the bottom apex and the surface. This would mean less need for heating and cooling. Heat waves and cold fronts could potentially be a lot less impactful. Living in an underground city. But we still haven't answered one very important question. Would we actually want to live in an underground city? 
There are plenty of issues when it comes to living underground. For one, the techniques that will allow fresh air and sunlight to penetrate the entire structures have to be perfected. Lack of oxygen and daylight could turn skyscrapers into prisons. Lack of quick access to the outside could also become an issue. We would have to come up with incredibly fast ways to traverse these towers. Thankfully, high-speed elevators exist that could cut travel time down significantly. Additionally, the earth scraper idea came from the hypothesis that it could better protect us from earthquakes. But is that true? Even with studies showing that the structure could possibly move less than 20 millimeters during seismic activity, it's a big risk to take. If the tower were to collapse in any way during an earthquake, it would be a disaster, leaving people buried in rubble and trapped hundreds of feet beneath the earth. The entire complex could fill with water. The earth scrapers could quickly become coffins. But if the technology for earth scrapers does become realistic one day, then living in one could be like paradise. Those concepts in Mexico City and Arizona definitely aren't dystopian in design. The same authors who wrote that paper in Smart Cities and Construction Technologies came up with some conclusions about whether or not this type of construction will ever be possible in our lifetime. They think we'll need to put time and effort into further investigating the liquefaction effect of earthquakes on underground structures to make sure that earth scrapers really will be safer from seismic activity. But they believe that with the current speed of advancement of software and material engineering, these types of structures could possibly start construction by the year 2050. So how much would they cost? Well, based on all the designs we've looked at so far, we're looking at around $1 billion per building and much more if we're making entire complexes and mini cities. Earth scrapers might seem a little far-fetched based on just a few concept designs, but there are elaborate underground structures being built right now that might be the precursors to an eventual inverted skyscraper, like the world's first underground hotel. This is intercontinental Shanghai Wonderland. Built in an abandoned former quarry, the $300 million project is an 18-story, mostly underground luxury complex. It took over a dozen years to complete. 16 of the 18 floors are underground, while two floors are underwater. The hotel's location minimizes the effects of chilling winds. It also maximizes sunlight. It's clearly an innovative and uniquely located paradise. Is this a small preview of what it might be like to one day live in an underground city? Now that you've got all the facts, do you think you could enjoy life in an earth scraper? Do you think we'll ever get to the point where our cities have to move underground? Let us know in the comments. While you're here, hit that bell, like this video, and subscribe to discover more mega projects that could change the world. Thanks for watching.